Hey guys, uh, good to be here for this Oxen Labs update. Um, lots going on, lots going on in the session team. Uh, on user config, we have now finished our um, desktop and Android cross platform testing. Um, so we caught a few update loops that were happening there. Basically, when one device would modify the user config, um, and then the other device would see that as an update and make its own update and basically cause a loop. So we finished debugging uh, most of that on Android and uh, desktop now, which leaves iOS, um, which is going to do its own kind of uh, cross-platform testing with Android emulators and um, desktop clients, which should be fairly good. And that'll be starting um, probably tomorrow or the next day on iOS. Um, the reason that that's a little bit delayed is our Android developers, uh, or one of our Android developers is on holiday right now. Um, and we are basically want to do a point release on Android just before we do the user config release as well. So um, that user, well, that point release is being done by an iOS developer now. So as soon as that um, gets finished up, we'll move on to finishing the last things on user config on iOS. Um, and hopefully it won't be very long before user config is into, into an internal test. Um, it didn't really make sense to do an internal test before we had resolved some of these um, kind of update loops that were going on because if we gave them to the team members they'd just run into these like continual issues that wouldn't be solved. Um, so it makes more sense to solve those at the dev side right now and then go to internal test later. Um, on the point release that I was talking about, that's going to be really big for Android. Um, basically, we're wrapping up um, most of the ANRs and crashes, or at least the biggest ANRs and crashes, ANRs being app not responding, um, and crashes that happen on Android. We've uh, gone through the Google Play statistics and worked out which ones are most likely to happen, and we've targeted those specifically in this point release. Um, so that'll be the biggest thing. And then there's a bunch of visual uh, changes as well that are happening. Not uh, massive visual, visual changes, basically just getting the tail end of theming um, done. There are a few things that weren't themed, for example, buttons and dividers and stuff, which are gonna be done um, in that release. Um, doing some stuff on disappearing messages as well, integrating the new user config stuff. Um, but yeah, big stuff happening on session and uh, lots of stuff happening on session as well. Um, on the Oxen team, we are still waiting for a response from our auditors. I mean, they've been communicative, but they haven't really been able to provide us much um, because they're talking to Ledger and Ledger is obviously having, um, you know, still having their, uh, their issues with the firmware that they released a few weeks ago. So I assume that's where they're focusing most of their attention. Um, we've now begun working on a few other things. So a few of the core developers are um, looking into libsession util right now um, to see if we can start on the closed group stuff there. Um, that still remains to be done in libsession. Um, and there's also some changes that are happening to the storage server in terms of um, adding some new endpoints there as well. Uh, and the push notification server too, um, which is progressing um, on all platforms at the moment as well. Um, LokiNet, we made a big release this week. Uh, we put up the repo for libquick. Um, so that has been in development for about a month now um, by Dan, and that's finally um, up on our public repository, so you can go and check it out now. Um, it's still kind of uh, quite limited in, in its functionality, like it's not, you know, it's not a full LokiNet implementation with libquick under the hood, but it uh, does allow you to kind of communicate client to server and then also do local host testing which we have started to do internally now and um, hopefully we'll have more of the results from that kind of internal testing of uh, libquick and to, to see you know uh, if we can reach bandwidth saturation when we're talking to a remote server if we're running into any um, performance issues when we're talking local host to local host um, we're basically starting to do that testing now, so I'll let you know about the results um, for that in the coming weeks. Um, I think that's about it uh, for this update, um, but there's lots happening as always, and uh, hopefully I'll see you at the next uh, labs update. I'll throw it over to Josh for the next section. See you guys. Hey guys, what's up? Uh, Josh is unavailable at the moment, so you're stuck with me. Um, big ticket item from last week was Alex and Sam in Chiang Mai, Thailand at a conference hosted by our friends at Engage Media where they were developing some pretty valuable relationships with digital rights uh, activists and other people involved in the space. Um, there are some people that we've been 
in 12 squares with regards to a variety of things, which we actually managed to sit down in person and hash some things out over the last week, which was super valuable. And we learned a lot about the way that people are using session in really high risk settings, which is invaluable information in terms of bringing that back to the team and using it to guide the design in the future. Um, overall, really huge week, not a huge amount that can be shared because obviously it's very sensitive for many of the people that are there. Um, but it went really well. Uh, back on home soil, I was actually out for most of the week. I had the flu last week, but the team was still kicking goals. Uh, we released a new episode of the session tapes in which myself and Alex discussed um, encrypted DMs on Twitter, which was a real juicy one, as well as Sam Altman, who is the open AI CEO, uh, fronting a Senate hearing, which is also pretty juicy. Go check that out, link in description. Um, as well as that, speaking of the session YouTube, we uh, got pretty close to the finish line on the session YouTube growth plan. Um, there's a bunch of really interesting tactics involved in this plan and it's good, it's great to see it sort of being built out in a way that can be transferred over really easily to Oxen as well. So you kind of get a double whammy of value for the time that we put into that. Um, as well as that, another big focus last week was the PR element of the Oxen Refresh uh, marketing campaign that we're working on. We are looking at having our messages pushed out by 75 or so different media outlets in crypto and traditional finance media, which is going to be really big and also looking at working with a bunch of different content creators as well in terms of interviews and other third party content. So that's coming along pretty nicely. Um, and yeah, catch you next week.